Hello guys, this is Kimberly with the Artistic Frog Studio. Um, here today we're going to be painting on some beeswax on a t-shirt. So um, sit back and relax and let's have some fun. Thanks for watching. Okay, let's get started. I um, first drew off a pattern and um, it's just helpful for me to draw my pattern in different colored sharpies so I can kind of get an idea of what what I'm going to paint, what color. Um, it just kind of helps me with the design a little bit, but it's not set in stone. I can change it once I get it on the shirt and even as I am, I'll take this and put it inside the shirt and draw the pattern off. I have a homemade light table that I use, um, but actually for this you could you could see right through it, so I just drew it off. I did not even need the light table. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, <clears throat> anyway, we will be um, painting this design on with uh, beeswax here. Um, got two janting tools in there. It's kind of dark over there. I don't know if you can see that or not. But um, this is the Janting Tool. T-J-A-N-T-I-N-G. And you can get these off of Amazon or Dharma Trading Company out of California. Um, they come in different sizes. And um, depending on what part of the world you're in, they come in different shapes too. So um, I do prefer these, um, the copper, instead of the metal. I just, um, these just work better, but you can use whatever tool that you would like to use. So I've got my beeswax heated up here. And um, it's around 200 degrees um, it's kind of warm in here so I may have to turn it down once I get started but I just put my hand inside the shirt and I'm, I'm cupping my hand up like that holding the shirt to where it doesn't my hand is not um, there's room under my hand so that the hot wax is not hitting my hand. Hopefully, the, the hot wax is not hitting my hand when I um, go to put the uh, hot wax on the shirt. So, let's get started here. Haven't done this in a couple of days. So, kind of kind of shaky to get started, but... We're just going to dive right in. Man, that's going on like butter. Okay, everywhere, first of all, I do not use Sharpies on, on the design on the shirt. Um, be sure that you use um, some kind of uh, washable marker. Um, you can use any, any type. You just got to make sure that, it's, um, that it says it's washable. Um, and it comes out in the dyeing process and pulling out the wax and all of that. So be sure you don't use Sharpies on this. Um, but everywhere I'm painting the wax is going to preserve the white shirt. So when this goes into a dye bath or um, the color is painted on, it, um, first of all, it, it, it's a, a resist line and it helps 
the color to keep from going outside. You have to make sure that um, all of your wax lines end up together. If you're painting, if you're doing the um, the dye baths, that's not so important that you that you have to make sure that you're that you're doing that. So um, let's keep going here. I apologize, y'all. It's hard for me to talk and concentrate at the same time, so. Just uh, hang in there with me. I do want these lines to be very defined. That's the reason why I keep going over it. I am using a, um, I believe this is a size 3 janting tool. Um, they come in different sizes, and I was going to show you this too. They also come with one that has a, a, double, a double spout on it. And um, I've, even though it does have wax on it, it looks pretty bad. You can't even tell that that's copper. Um, I never have actually used it. Uh, it's just hung around in the wax pot and um, gotten kind of nasty from that and fallen in the wax and all of that. <laughs> so um, that's the reason why I use the can. I don't know if you can... I used a, an old vegetable can. I took the top and the bottom out of it. Um, and I did have to cut it back a little bit because it was much taller than I wanted it to be. So I just cut into the bottom of the can and then um, put the sides out. So um, I don't know that I can even show you that. So that it helps it be more stable. Nope, that's a little bit too hot. Anyway, you can use a can to to hold your tools so that they don't fall in the wax. It's very, very helpful. Um, okay, let's let's keep painting here. I like to get this finished in one setting. I am using mostly pure beeswax, um, the unfiltered. Um, I forget now where I got that from. I think I got it off of Etsy. Um, but you can just Google it. Um, but anyway, most of it is 100% beeswax, um, unfiltered, organic, natural. Um, and then I also have some that I got from Hobby Lobby in their uh, candle making department. Whew. 
getting wax was getting cool on me there. Um, anyway, I got um, some of this is uh, some of this is filtered, and it's the uh, wax that you can get. Like I said, from the candle department. At um, I just prefer using Hobby Lobby. You can get it any other place, but they basically all have the same kind. But I use the 40% off coupon, or I make sure that I get it on sale, which is um, not so easy with um, the 100%. organic unfiltered wax so far I've never been able to see that on sale uh, I may have to turn that up just a smidge. I'm just trying to draw a really, really long lines. Anyway, I do kind of tap it on there because with the uh, the unfiltered beeswax, it has all kinds of. Um, All kinds of natural goodies in it and um, and it it clogs the tool so it helps to to give it a little tap every now and then like when I noticed it was coming out real real slow at the top up here I'm still drawing I just want to check out the bottom here and uh, try to show you what the inside looks like. Yeah. See, it's going through. You know when you're when you're um, doing batik, it's not absolutely necessary that um, that you draw out a pattern first. Um, it just all depends on what kind of artist you are. You know, if you like to have. Um, you like things planned, which I do. My background is um, in pen and ink, and I'm I'm um, very much a perfectionist. So. Um, When I found uh, this medium, actually I found silk painting first using a resist and um, use different dyes than the Procyon MX dyes that, that I use on these 100% cotton t-shirts. Um, the Procyon MX dyes are, uh, you can use that to uh, do full immersion dyes, um, all kinds of different different types, but that's not what I use on my silk. I use um, jacquard 
um, the green label right now. I'm trying to get out of that because the Jacquard green label uh, silk dye is is not as um, vibrant as the uh, Jacquard red label. When I got the green label, it was because I was so new. To silk painting and, um, and I really do not enjoy the steaming process you put in a whole lot of time on a piece of artwork and you put it in a steamer and you get one drip <sighs> for a perfectionist that that makes me nuts absolutely makes me nuts but the color payoff with the red label um i just think it's worth it I, I think it's worth the gamble um so um yeah that's the way i got started in this i found um i hope she doesn't mind me using her her name uh victoria Batikwala. Um, she's on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Um, she's just the queen of batik, in my opinion. She does some really, really beautiful stuff. But um, I was watching her videos. Pay attention to what I'm doing here. Um, I found her on YouTube and I started watching her videos and, um, She's just fascinating. Check her out. Check her out. She's really cool. Um, but that's how I learned to do this process. Doing the t-shirts. and I have a dress over there that I want to do. For spring. Guess I need to get busy with it. Put flowers all along the bottom. Uh. And you see me adjusting this. I'm trying to get to where... I can move this so that it doesn't hit my hand or my arm underneath. to figure out where the wax was supposed to go here. I got a lot of lines drawn. The uh, the thing that I like about drawing this on with the marker first is that you don't have to be so concerned 
with um, with how it's drawn on. All of these lines are going to disappear. So um, if I if I draw it on there or my pattern underneath shifts or, or whatever the reason, um, and I don't like what I've done, I just kind of go over it, and um, she won't see all of this in the end. So stuff like that at this point doesn't really bother me um, and when I'm in the zone and, and putting wax on the shirt and um, I may I may change something I may go longer than a line or shorter than a line or or do do something slightly different than than what I have um, I just uh It just doesn't concern me at this point, as long as the waxing part gets on the shirt and it looks nice, and it's it's gonna it's gonna hold its line. That's that's what I'm concerned with right now. Okay, let's get geared up for this long line here. Make sure that line went through. It's getting temperature was getting kind of yeah. See, I mean it's enough. It's enough. Put this other line here. My arms aren't long enough. I'll blow that and help that to dry. I don't know if it's in the screenshot or not. I love this down here that I did. I um I added that. This is the, this was the trial. This was the one that I did first. Usually I put these in um, multiple dye baths. Um, the, this one I didn't. I painted it on there. Um, I just want a little bit more of a wider range of colors 
that I can pick and choose and not um, not have the color before determine what color it's it's gonna be next like if I put it in a in a yellow dye bath first anything after the yellow needs to be um, it's just got to work with it you know um, you got to know your color chart and what color you're going to get if you mix um, yellow and then you come and put a blue over it you think oh blue will look really really pretty there well yellow and blue you're going to get green um, which is great for some of this but um, it was really important that I have blue in this so um, so that's the reason why I'm doing these a little bit different than I normally do but um, I think they're going to be truly special but um, I just thought a uh, little whimsy would be nice um, kind of pretty so let's keep going here and I do like to start from the top of the shirt and work down I don't do this on a flat surface um, sometimes I do and I may I may have to I don't like the big blobs of wax I'm just uh, really I'm a perfectionist what can I say um, and the more you work with the janting tool the better that you become but I need to stop talking and get busy let's get this on here That is just uh, too high for that right now. Sorry, well, uh, try to adjust here. That's better. I do have electric chanting tools and I have one and I try to use it on my silk bought the special beaded wax for it and everything um, I didn't care for it I, I know that there are some people that just absolutely love it gotta dry that um, I know that there are some people that love it. I uh, I did not care for it. It it um, it would catch the silk, and it would pull my silk. <laughs> and uh, so after one trial, I I just didn't I didn't mess with it anymore. Did not want to mess with it anymore. Fatigue is not a um, not calming to a perfectionist. Um, it could tend to drive you crazy, but um, like I said, uh, I was watching Victoria Fatigue Walla. And I just, I fell in love with the process. She made it look so easy. And, um, I just had to try it, get into it. And, um, I'm hooked. I love it. There are the occasional drips. Um, 
you know, things are going to happen and you just, you just have to work with it. It's just, it's not, it's not going to be perfect. Um, and that's okay. That's okay. I'm in that, um, that era in time in my life where you just, um, just gotta let it go sometimes. It is what it is, and, um, just gotta have fun with it. Nice and smooth, but it's wet. Don't know if you can see that. How good the lighting is. But you can kind of blow on it and cool it off enough so that you can um, put your hand under it and um, it won't burn you. Just trying to figure out what I need to do next. Uh, let's do swirly swirls here. Chanting tools cooling off. Back in the wax. There we go. Like I said, this is not one of those perfectionism kind of things. This is truly uh, handcrafted and it just, uh, I think it just adds to the character. Um, that things are not and will not be perfect. And uh, you just have to learn to work with it. Tool's gotta be clogged up. not want to come out of there. Uh, 
much better, much, much better. you guys are enjoying this as much as I am enjoying doing it it's just uh, it's a fascinating process I don't know if you can see what I'm doing there kind of an odd angle I'll just work through it I don't remember if I said it or not. This is a 100% um, a cotton t-shirt. This is a, a 2X. It's a, it's a size 20. Um, these do tend to um, shrink up a little in the batiking process. So, um, when you're looking to buy batik, you really need to go buy the fit and don't get, don't get all bent out of shape about what size it is or anything like that. It's I mean, want you in something that's going to look flattering to you. Um, so you just can't get hung up in um, in all of that. And what size it is. And I hope you guys can hear me okay. I did a test run. This is a new phone that I have. And it's getting to where I couldn't record on the other one. And I'm not sure about all the ins and outs on this phone yet. So, hope you're still there. Yeah. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me if you've hung out with me this long. Um, this uh, painting, the, painting with beeswax just is, uh, I just love it. It's, it's not like anything else. You, uh, once it's there, it's there. Um, there's no changing it. You just got to work with it, work through it, 
and um, hmm, kind of to the bottom here. Um, just got to work with it. Let me um, let me adjust this real quick. See if I can. Don't know if that will be helpful or not. Maybe. Just laid out there kind of funny. So. I'm just trying to get it to where it's not going to burn my hand underneath and so that you can see what I'm doing. That's just an odd angle, but we'll work with it. Usually don't like to stop right in the middle of a line, but it's okay. Excuse me here, I have wax building up on my janting tool. work that into the, the design there. Just uh tool is clogged. here I can clear that there we go okay we're getting close we're getting close to being finished here one This little swirl here while well, that's all wet. get that dry there not completely dry just at least cooled off I have um, other videos on the 
doing the traditional batik process um, haven't been able to upload a lot of them having a lot of trouble with that but um, I'll try to get some more of those on um, just it's, uh, it's just a learning process These uh, videos have been taken way, way, way too long to upload. I've tried to go in and figure all that out. It's just uh, it's a, it's a learning process. I'm trying to get not only a new art form figured out, but... Um, Start going online with it. And showing other people. This is just too good not to share, guys. It's, uh, it's very unique. It's very unique. You see a lot of tie-dye stuff everywhere. But um, you... In America, you do not see a lot of batik. Um, it's just a fascinating process. And I go back and forth over the lines. It's because the um, the wax is not coming out as thick as I would like it to. I'm not getting a thick enough line. So that's why I'm doing a lot of the back and forth. But I found that if I use, um, well, I'm using the number three, not the number two. Um, let's see if I can get this. It's just trial and error, guys. Whatever works for you. Um, and you just got to keep, got to keep with it. Okay, let's get this last swirl. And we will call this one done. This part of it anyway. Wanted that connected there. All right. I think we've got it all. See everything there? 
so I thank you guys for watching and um, if you're interested on learning more about the batik process just be sure to um, like and subscribe um, if you're watching on Facebook if you would share that would be great too it's uh, kind of a different process and people don't know about it so um, the more we can get out there about the batik process the better off batik will be so um, thanks for watching and I will see you next time bye bye